Share screen window. Where's this thing? Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, eight. Can you hear me? All right. Here we go. Let me start everything off by telling you, and this is from personal experience for my own self. I preach this to you all the time. I am myself guilty of it every occasionally. Okay, but I will tell you, you desperately, you desperately need to write. When you're working with slope, you desperately need to be very, 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 very clear in your writing and take your time and do it in a big space because so many times you're going to get one wrong simply because you had two negatives together. You didn't take the time to write them down like that. You tried to skip a step or whatever. There's not that many problems on there. Just take your time. Every problem is critical, cr critical and critical. Crucial and critical. I mean, it just take your time. Label the points. Put the points down. Keep yourself organized. Use a big piece of paper because this is one of those things where the math in this is not hard. It just gets confusing because you have so many steps to do. Now, so let us start. Now, hopefully, number one doesn't shoot you off there. What, Kabarik? Which one? Kabarik is desperate about number seven. What, where where did you where did you end up on number seven? Uh, I totally didn't do it. Right. Totally didn't do it. So in other words, the only way for something to be a line, okay, would be for you or a linear function would be you look at you compare, you know, what happens to go from to go on my x's they keep jumping by one and it doesn't have to, okay, but to make life easy for you right now it does. Okay, since these are all constant, in order for this to be a linear function, the y's would also have to be the same constant by adding and subtracting, not multiplying. Multiplying, if you multiply it, then things go on a curve. But here, what happens here is this goes down 0.5 from here to here. Does the next one go down 0.5 as well? Yes. Does the next one go down 0.5 as well? Yes. Boom. Does the next one go down 0.5 as well? Yes. Now, this could make a jump of 2, and you could put a 6 there, but that means this would have to go down by 2.5s, and your answer would be 0.5 there. Okay, so it doesn't have to go by 1, so you just have to know it's a constant proportional and constant ratio. Okay, then it asked you, probably where you got it wrong, you might have got that right, but you got the writing the linear equation wrong. Well... The basic gist of that, again, is and this isn't one of the harder problems. Um, you get y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. Okay, The b should be kind of obvious to you because the y-intercept is always where x is 0, and they give you the x is 0. So the b is going to be plus 3.5. Now, if you are mathematical... Right away here, you could see that the slope of this thing is right there, okay? It's the change in y over the change in x. x changes point, negative 0. 0.5 for every one. So, but, but if that isn't the case, which it probably wasn't for most of you, then you just use the slope formula where m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And here's what I said. I think the more time you take to do this and write it out point blankly, the easier, the more likely your chances of getting it right. Now, because it doesn't matter what two points you pick, I would pick maybe this one and this one because they don't have any decimal them and I don't have to worry about them. But then I might do myself a favor and write those two points down so I see them kind of side by side. And I might, if I really wanted to get these right, label this as x sub 1 and y sub 1 and x sub 2 and y sub 2. Take your time. Then put your parentheses, put your parentheses, 
and then fill in the blanks there. Y sub 2 is 2 minus Y sub 1, which is 3. Uh, X sub 2 is 3 minus this, which is 1. I'm doing the math, 2 minus 3 is a negative 2 over 3 minus 1, which is? I'm sorry, what did I write? Negative 1. Negative 1 over 3 minus 2, which is 2. So even when I do it, it's slow. I still get it and right there is your slope, which is a negative 1 half. And then you just put those there. There is an x there. And you end up with that whole sort of thing there. Again, not hard, but confusing because there's all sorts of places where you can go south. Robins! Do number 10. Love to do number 10. Number 10, okay, you simply just have to find the slope of both of those lines and see how they compare. Your three options are either the exact same slope, which makes them parallel, opposite reciprocal slope, which makes them perpendicular, or neither one of those two, which makes them, they just cross at some point. So here we go. Line A, again, I would do this maybe x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. I get y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, parentheses, minus parentheses, over parentheses, minus parentheses, 6 minus 4, 3 minus 1, 6 minus 4 is 2, 3 minus 1 is 2, which is a positive 1 slope. Did I do that right? How does that compare to this one? Hopefully I did that right. I'm going to do the same thing again. Uh, x2, I'm oh, sorry, x of 1, y sub 1, x of 2, y sub 2. Put my parentheses there. y sub 2 is minus 3, minus a negative 6. On the bottom, negative 1 minus negative 3. Positive 6 minus 3. Looks like I get 3 there. Positive 3 minus 1. Looks like I get a 2 there. That would be my slope of that, which is 3 halves. Those two are not either opposite, nor are they alike. So... Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. I always like a little affirmation here when I'm up here. Yes. Is that what I said the answer was? Okay. Yes. Who got that wrong and would you say why or did you not? Did you just not? Did you actually get them as the same slope or opposite slopes? Yeah, I wasn't opposite. I got, I got negative 3 over 3. So I changed it to negative 1. Well, negative 3 over 3 is negative 1. Yeah, I know that, but I don't know how I got it. Oh, okay. And again, it might be just helpful to take a giant. I've always found the bigger I write it, the bigger the letters, the less, the neater I write, the better my chances are. Avery! Um, where is Susan? Don't you have to graph it? For these two? Yeah. No, that's what the slope tells you. If they have the same slope, Avery, they're going to go in the same. Same slope lines will go in the same direction forever and never cross. So if, they, if the num two numbers are the same, it's going to be parallel. Okay. If you get one, to, I mean, if I had a, if one slope was three half, the line that would make a perpendicular line to it would be the negative reciprocal. If I end up with this and this, where the fraction gets flipped over and that's it, these are perpendicular no matter what. And if it's neither the same or there, it has to be this one. If their slopes aren't related at all, you don't have to. I mean, you could graph it, Avery. If you really wanted to test yourself, I suppose, that's kind of a hard way to do it, but you could do it. I mean, we could sit down and do it, but that's all. If their slopes were close, they might look like they're parallel and not really be parallel. Look, see. Uh, I'm 
and again. Okay. You are fortunate because y equals mx plus b. Okay, you don't. You know the b. Why do I know the b right off the bat, Lucy? Why do I know the y intercept off the bat? Because the y intercept is always where x is zero. Okay. If I were graphing that point on the line, zero, negative seven is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, way down here. So I know this part of this already. I know this is negative seven. I just have to find out what the slope is, what the number in front of the x is. What will the slope be? And that's a matter of doing the same thing we just did. This is your x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. Do it all out you know, in parentheses, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Negative 7 minus 0, 0 minus 4. Negative 7 minus 0 is a negative 7. 0 minus 4 is a minus 4. Your negatives are just going to make it positive, so it's going to be 7 fourths. And that's the equation we are looking for. LMA Schlody. Wait, 4? Ah, this is a good one to talk about. Same thing is true. Y equals mx plus b. I know where x is 0, that's my y-intercept, so I have a minus 3 there. Now I sit down and do my whole x1, y1, x2, y2. You can see how important the slope formula is. Do my parentheses. Some of you don't do parentheses. You might still get them right. You're a little more organized than I am. Negative 3 minus a negative 3 on top. On the bottom, 0 minus 2. Now, here's the deal. A negative negative 3 is actually a positive 3. Okay. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. On the bottom, you get negative 2, which is okay. You can have that. You can't have a 0 on the bottom. You have the 0 on the top. Okay. If the 0 is on the bottom, it's an x equals line, by the way. But this means I get 0 for my slope, which means I put 0 there. It's like I said, 0x is nothing. Your actual equation is y equals negative 3. Which makes sense, ladies and gentlemen, because if you did graph this and connected the two dots of the points, 0, negative 3 is right here. 2, negative 3 is right here. The graph of that line is that right there. It's a horizontal line at x where y equals negative 3. And David would be willing to tell you that the slope of a horizontal line is... Yeah, yeah that's it. Not quite as emphatic as in past, but hey. Finally, Kavarik, it's up to you. So if the coordinate is right, there has to be x sub one and y sub one? Nope. You could, I could have made these my twos and those my ones. It doesn't matter, but you can't put x sub one, y sub two. You can't mix the twos and the ones. If this is, these both need to be ones, those be ones. You can make this both twos, those both have to be ones. Doesn't matter what, that doesn't matter. However you want to do it. But again, I just be consistent because it helps me stay consistent. How many more times can I say the word consistent? Consistently speaking, LMH Lodi. I love six. What are we looking for, number six? The line that passes through in point slope form. All right. Notes for tomorrow. I would definitely jot down my point slope formula, which it which is y minus y sub one equals the slope and x minus x of 1. To write something in point slope form, you just need to replace the m with the slope, which is right here. And you keep 
the y and the x, you need to figure out what this and this would be. And the beautiful thing about it is they told you what this is. This is your x point. That is your y point. I put that in for x. So this becomes x minus 3. I put that in for y. This becomes y minus 4. And you are literally done. The one caution on that is this, ladies and gentlemen. If these numbers were negative, then these become positive because you have two negatives next to each other. These numbers were negative. I think that happened. Is that happening over here? Yeah. When I put negative 4 in for x over there in the end, ending parenthesis, it became x plus 4 because it was two negatives. x minus a minus is a positive. Hello, if you're listening. Wait, I should turn turn the mic. I'll turn the camera on just for a minute. Wait. Just so you can see what's going on here. Look. Look at all those people right there. Ryan Kavarik has a question. Ryan. Um, so are they gonna make us find the slope on the test? Or are they gonna give you like for this problem? Yeah. I'm going to guess it's going to look very much like that. Could you? Yes. But they'd probably give you two points, and then you'd have to figure the slope out, and then you have to plot the other. It gets a little strange. Lucy? Number eight. You know, and I don't, oh, I do have it on here. The one that just asked you to find the slope? All you're doing is finding the slope? Is that the one? It doesn't ask you for a line, just ask you for a slope. And again, just for Ryan Kavarik's sake, I'm going to flip them around this time just to show you that it's possible. Is that, did that mess you up? I will make this x2, y2, and x1, y1. Boom. Maybe it's better because this comes first. Negative 3 minus 6. Positive 2 minus negative 4. Wait, does I think there's somebody? Did I do something wrong? Okay. So this becomes minus 3 plus 6. This becomes 2 plus 4. It wasn't negative. That's right. Why did I put it? As I thought I thought I asked if I did something. So you end up with a negative three minus six, which is negative nine, over two plus four, which is six. You end up with negative three halves. Now I will flip it around and do it the other way, just because. Let me make this the x one, y one. Make this the x sub two, y sub two. And do it. Do it the complete backwards way. So six minus six minus a negative three over negative four minus two. Again, this becomes plus three. Six plus three is nine. Negative four, negative two is negative six. You still get negative three halves. Either way you do it, the slope is negative three halves. As long as you're consistent. <laughs> The beauty of math, children. The beauty of mathematics. Blank stairs, nothing on the whole second page. Everything was funky, peachy, teeny, dory. Like the scatter plot, the equation of a perpendicular parallel line, nobody, nothing, everybody. Carter Reichert! Maybe 13. Love to do 13. We are looking for the line that is perpendicular. And the gist with perpendicular lines is that they have negative reciprocal slope. So you don't, this 12, you don't need to know. You are only needing the slope, and then you need to find where it crosses the y-axis at that slope. So Carter Reichert, the slope of this original line was 1 fourth. What is that flipped over made its opposite? 
4 over 1, which is just 4. We don't have to put it. And it was positive. It now becomes negative. It's opposite reciprocal. Two things have to happen to it. It flips over, changes to its opposite. This becomes x. Y equals. I now just need to use this point to figure out what the letter B is. And to do that, I just plug this in as my x value and that in as my y value. So 5 equals negative 4 times 2 plus b. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. To solve for b, I've got to move that negative 8 over, so I add 8, I add 8. And that's where that dreaded 13 came from that I must have gotten on. b equals positive 13, which is what you put right here. y equals negative 4x plus 13. Emily Roberts. Can I do number 11? I'm hoping I can. Parallel lines, ladies and gents, have the same exact slope. So all you have to do is you're getting rid of that and figuring out where the new line crosses the y-axis. So I take my y equals negative 2 thirds x plus b, and I plug in my, what's that all about? I plug in this for x and that for y. 6 in for x means I get negative 2 thirds times 6 over 1. And y was 2. Are you with me, Emily? Fortunately, this kind of cross cancels. The 3 goes into 6 twice. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So I still have this 2 here. Equals negative 4 plus b. To solve and find out what b is, I have to add 4. 4, 4. So b equals 6. That is what I put in for the letter B there. Y equals negative 2 thirds X plus 6. If you got it wrong, was it just because of a silly mistake? They usually are. Silliness makes the world go round. Come on, all right. Well, you just got to take a global look at it. Negative 3, negative 2 is here. Uh, negative 2, 0. Negative 1, 1. 0, 0. 0, 1. 0, 2. No. Yeah, yeah 0, 2. And 1, 2. And two, three. Okay. If you take a look at those dots, they all definitely look like from left to right. It's just going uphill. I mean, if I would have had a dot, I'd have had a couple dots down here and a couple up there, or whatever. And if you can't see a pattern, then it's no correlation. But if they line up in somewhat of a line that you could draw or see, then it's going to be either positive or negative. Anderson, your thought? You were not here when I did this one. Did you end up with the right answer, or are you just ignoring it and hoping it will go away? Or what? Again, for problem number 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, don't freehand that. I gave you the helpful hint on that. What? Right. What? What, how do you know which, which two dots can you? I am glad the Kalari boy asked me that because I have one more practice problem to go over on that. Just I think this one's worth so many points that I want this is ask me why this is on cardstock. Go ahead, ask. Why is this on cardstock? Because this is Gallup, yeah. As I was printing with cardstock in it. So consider yourself fortunate that you get to work on cardstock. This is 
So here we go. I am going to give you a table on the board up here. You plot the points, draw what you feel is the line of best fit, and see if you end up with the same equation or close to. Close to. Wait, let me find it here. This this would be the table. Yes. Right there. Plot those points. See if in you see if you and I come up with the same equation. Because huh? In part, you are kind of your own boss on this, like as I stated before. If I were you, since it's not an exact science, I would make my line of best fit touch some perfect coordinates so you can figure out both equations. I'm interested to see if you and me and the dog named Boo would get the same answer. Now don't be too, come on, think about this. Before you draw these lines, before you draw these lines, Can I not move this a lot? So I can draw my own little graph. Is this it? Sure. I'm going to ignore you and pretend I didn't hear what you're saying. Oh. Ah, well, did you come up with one? I would say the first thing you'd want to do is just kind of glance at this. I mean, kind of like just look at it, visualize maybe. I, you can see this thing going up like this. So your goal is to kind of, unless there's some outliers, dots that are way out of the norm. Your goal is to try to split this as much down the middle so you got the same number of dots on top as on bottom. So I'm just going to do this for right now. Okay, and here is where I said, you know, since this is not an exact science, try to find a couple places that fit pretty well where the line actually hits a coordinate like this. This is a specific 9, 8 coordinate there. So if you could move the other side that doesn't get real crazy, you know, and figure out, and I might even kind of look, you know, I don't know, maybe something like that. I suppose you could maybe drop it. Does that look too high? I don't know. Maybe you could come down here and scoot it a little this way. There, there are, you're going to get relatively close. Does that? I don't know. I kind of like where it was before. Like this. Or maybe you want to use that one. Maybe I use that one. I don't know. This one and that one. So anyways, the gist would be this. Uh, I'm going to use... I'm maybe going to use that. I will call these two my coordinates here. I'll plot from 
take you this point and this point. So the slope of my line is two up, one, two, three, four over, positive one half. Now again, you might have something else. Give me your slope. Obviously, I mean, if you had, huh? No, it's going uphill. Pretty sure it's positive. Anybody have a different slope? Everybody got one half? Lila, you got what? Two thirds is going to be close enough because you might have, you know, your line's going to tip a little bit, but it's still a pretty close fraction. Three fifths is also close to two. Any of those are close to a half for the most part. So you're going to get y equals my slope is one half x. Uh, and then I would just assume it's close to minus three. Getting close is going to be good enough in my world for this. If I get something else for the y intercept? I'm sorry, positive three. I looked at the thing there. I'm going to believe the guy who made the graph. Huh? And then if you were asked to predict what you would get at 12 or even 11, 12, you know, there's two ways you could do it. You could put 12 into your equation. Half of 12 is 6, and 6 plus 3 is 9. And you'd end up with this. And again, there's going, to be a, there's going to be a small margin of error in all of this, but it's, it's getting close. So the, to answer your question, Kavarik, adjust the line kind of to fit your needs so that you don't, I mean, you don't want it to cross anywhere I mean, at a bad point, so. These are the good old days. Any other ones before I shut down the phone? Let me give you a practice perpendicular one. Huh? Anderson, who was not even here yesterday, is speaking for the rest of you. And I cannot believe that he would do such a thing. Right. <laughs> 